This is the controller block diagram that I used to demonstrate the simulation of three-phase grid connected inverter, which I explained in one of my previous videos. In that video, many people had asked me, why this 2 by VDC term is used in the controller. So in this video, I am going to explain to you the reason why 2 by VDC term is being used here in the controller. This is the three-phase grid connected inverter simulation, that I had demonstrated to you earlier. And I will be using this simulation file, to explain you the concept behind, 2 by VDC term. Now let me open the block, where I have connected the 2 by VDC term. So as you see, I have connected the 2 by VDC blocks in all three phases, before it is given to the comparator blocks, to generate the PWM signals. Now I will add a scope, and connect it to the reference signals, at the input, where the 2 by VDC term is connected. Now let's run the simulation. And we need to check, how much is the amplitude of the reference signal, which is connected to the scope. Let's open the scope and see the waveform. Here you can clearly see that, the reference voltage is a sinusoidal signal, with amplitude nearly, plus 400 and, minus 400. Why it is 400? Because, the DC input voltage is 800, and the maximum value of this voltage will be, half of the DC bus voltage, that is 400. Now in order to generate the PWM signals, we are comparing this reference voltage with the triangular carrier signal. But the problem here is, the magnitude of the triangular signals is only, plus and minus 1. So here, we cannot compare the reference voltage, whose magnitude is very large, with a carrier signal, whose magnitude is between plus and minus 1. So in order to avoid this problem, we have to limit the reference voltage between 1 and minus 1. So to limit its value, we have to multiply the signal by 2 by VDC. Why we are multiplying with 2 by VDC? Because, the maximum possible value of the reference voltage is VDC by 2. So multiplying VDC by 2, with 2 by VDC, gives you a magnitude of, 1. And now we can easily compare both the waveforms and generate the PWM signals. And if we don't do this multiplication in the simulation, the inverter goes into the overmodulation region, and won't get the proper voltage output. Hope this video has helped you to, understand the concept. Thanks for watching.